getting too close to the enemy. It's starting to become a liability. Sorry, but I don't take kindly to excuses. Brookie? Are you okay? I thought I heard... Apollo, get in here. We have a case. How are you holding up? I suppose I'm doing all right. Spare the whole being tried for murder thing. What even is that? Looks like some cheap golden coin or something. I want you guys off my crime scene. Pronto. It's been a while. Hasn't it, right? Edgeworth? I take it you're prosecuting today? That I am right. It's been a while since I've taken a case. I just got back from an overseas business exchange and I'm eager to tax my brain a bit. I heard the defendant of today's case was Miss Fay. Thus, I knew you would step in to defend her. Well then I guess it'll be just like old times? I suppose it will be. Though, after all these years, it still perplexes me how Miss Fay manages to get into these situations so often. It's almost like a hobby. Hey! It's not like I want to be in this situation. And who is this strangely hairstyled fellow? Okay, it's a bit of gel and some hairspray, man. It's not that strange. Quite a short temper as well. My name is Apollo Justice, and I'm Mr. Wright's apprentice. Ah, so this is the one you told me about over the phone. The very same. Then I have high hopes. This will be... Interesting, to say the least. Uh, thank you. Well, Mr. Wright, Mr. Justice, I will see you both in the courtroom. Huh. You guys seem oddly chill about the situation. When you live with that for nearly two decades, you get used to it. But he's your best friend. Yeah, it's not personal. He's just doing his job. Can't blame him for that. Defense team, the court is ready for you. All right, Apollo. You ready? Oh, I'm more than ready. I'm fine! That's what I like to hear. Let's get going. The court will now convene for the trial of Maya Fay. Prosecution, are you ready? As always, Your Honor. And you, defense? We are indeed, Your Honor. And I see you brought Mr. Justice along for the ride. That he did, and I'm ready and raring to go! Now, I always appreciated that spirit of yours, Mr. Justice goes to show that new blood in the court system is still flowing strong. What can I say? It's a living. Just barely. Very good, very good. And have you been keeping up with your studies? Your Honor, remember we do have a trial to get to. Well, never one for pleasantries, are you, Mr. Edgeworth? <sighs> very well. If you would begin with your opening statement. <sighs> Right. On the night of March 6th, the defendant and victim, Brooke Kazurd, went out to eat at Guy Eldoon's noodle shop to celebrate the defendant returning from a long trip afar. After eating, the pair left the noodle shop and entered down a neighboring alleyway. Here, the pair got into a fight and ensuing scuffle. Miss Fay then pulled out a gun and shot the victim three times. The firearm in question has a prints on it, and we also confirmed the bullet casings with the gun model. As for motive, we suspect the victim had one of her... attacks. Attacks? The victim suffered bipolar disorder. She was prone to having manic fits of rage. We suspect she had one of these attacks and attacked the defendant, causing her to act in self-defense and murder the victim. I didn't know Brooke had bipolar disorder. I suppose she hit it well. 
As for testimonies, we have a statement from Detective Gumshoe, as well as testimony from one Jacques Sportsman. That's that jerk from yesterday! Yeah, his testimony is sure to be interesting. If I may call Mr. Gumshoe to the stand. You know the drill, Detective. Name's Dick Gumshoe. I'm a detective down at the local precinct. Now then, Mr. Gumshoe, your testimony if you would. Well, you see, pal, Brooke Cazard was shot and stabbed three times in the chest. He was killed around 9 to 10 p.m. We suspect that girl of doing it, because her prints were on the gun plain as day. Plus, we also have that other guy's findings. It's hard to say this, but she's looking pretty guilty to me. Hmm. Nothing sounds out of the ordinary so far. Anything jumping out at you, Mr. Wright? Not particularly. In this case, we might just want to press for information. Hold it! Any idea why the killer stabbed and shot the victim? The stab wounds came second, so we suppose the killer shot the victim, then stabbed him to finish the job. Hold it! What about the knife? The knife only had one set of fingerprints, belonging to the victim, if I remember correctly. Hold it! Would this be Mr. Portsman? That's him. Personally, no, I don't trust the guy. But that's just me. I think that's all the questions I have. Detective Gumshoe, thank you for your time. No contradictions on the first go? That's new for you, right? Are you sure there's no glaring error in Mr. Gumshoe's statements? Or some unbelievable fact that we all happen to overlook? Very funny. Mr. Gumshoe, you're free to leave. Thank you for your testimony. No problem, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. It was my pleasure. Now then, I wish to bring Investigator Portsman to the stand. As you wish, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Well, well, it's been a long time, hasn't it, Prosecutor Edgeworth? Indeed it has. I can see post-prison life treats you well. Well enough, I suppose. Got a job as an investigator at the local precinct under the rehabilitation program. He spent time in prison? Alright, no time like the present, eh? Let's do this. Well, during my investigation, I came across many interesting conundrums. For instance, the defendant taking the knife and trying to cover up the gunshot wounds with stab wounds? Rookie mistake. Then I happened across something very, very interesting. The defendant was not merely defending herself, but robbing the victim as well. As we can see here, the knife wounds have some gold dust around them. What are they from? The victim's priceless gold coin that the defendant tried to steal. Using the knife, the defendant ended up striking the coin, scraping some gold shavings off and getting them on the knife. And that's the story. Do you say the defendant robbed the victim? That's absolutely correct. Tried to steal her precious gold coin. What kind of person carries a golden coin around? And secondly, none of that made any sense. You saw it too, right? The giant sinkhole that opened up in his testimony? Yes, I did. Alright then, let's get him! I'm 
Objection! I wouldn't say that's the only rookie mistake made today. And what is that supposed to mean? You still don't see it, do you? How could Maya have used the knife when her prints aren't even on it? Man, you got good hustle, but your aim is totally off. It doesn't matter if her prints weren't on the knife, she could have wiped them off. Huh? Then why are the victim's prints still on it? Simple. You wipe your prints off, and with the knife still in the napkin, you place it in the victim's hands. See? Easy peasy lemon, uh, something or other. I forget the rest. <laughs> that, I... Well then, I suppose we can accept Mr. Portsman's testimony. Hold the phone there, Mr. Portsman. Really? In what order did you say the wounds were inflicted? Another easy question. The victim was shot, then stabbed. Then can you explain to me how the gun still had prints on it? Still had... Ugh. If what you said about wiping the prints away is true, then there shouldn't be any prints on the gun. I... Uh... Wait a minute. What is it? Mr. Portsman's necklace. Does it look familiar to you? Now that you mention it... Yeah. Yeah, it does! Objection! Mr. Wright, I hate to interrupt your little chat, but perhaps it's something you can share with the class? Actually, yes it is, Mr. Edgeworth. It is something I would love to share. What are you getting at, exactly? Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I am about to present to you the true killer of Miss Brooke Cazard. As you can see here, Brooke's precious coin is in dire straits. One could even say that it's not even real, as when you look closer, you can see that underneath the layer of gold lies nothing but gray plastic. Get to the point, right? I'd wager to say that this isn't a valuable coin at all. In fact, it looks strikingly similar to the necklace you're wearing right now, Mr. Jacques Portsman! Ah! Objection! And what makes you say that? Objection! There is one way to tell for sure if Mr. Portsman's necklace matches this coin. The gold coating will simply rub off. Rub off? Mr. Portsman, may I see your necklace for a moment? Uh, I, uh, y you see, uh... Or perhaps we can check that jacket of yours for gold dust remnants from wiping off the knife handle to get rid of your prints. Uh... I'm, uh... Or to make it simple, you could just admit it all right here and save yourself the embarrassment! Uh, I... You... Uh, I mean, I, uh... And that's all she wrote, Your Honor. Now, I suppose this is to be expected by now. Well, once again, it seems as though Mr. Wright has proven his defendant's innocence. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. I would amount it all to luck, but no man on Earth can have a deck stacked like this. Well, getting to formalities, I see no reason to further prolong this trial. Now, I've seen proof enough that Miss Fay was, once again, caught up in a rather unfortunate situation. The court finds the defendant, Maya Fay. Court is adjourned. Oh my gosh! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Nick! I knew I could count on you both! It was nothing, Maya. It's what friends are for, right? Exactly! We always look out for one another. Though... I still don't understand why Mr. Portsman killed Brooke. I didn't even think they knew each other. It's tough to say. Sometimes these things just happen. It's a shame it did, but 
Brooke can rest easy knowing her killer was caught red-handed. You utter fool. Nearly throwing away all I worked for. With one fell swoop, you nearly cost me everything. Months of time spent. Nearly washed away by a naive idiot. Oh, come on, man. You can't blame me for trying. I was just following your orders. It was an honest mistake. I thought I made it clear to you that I don't accept mistakes. I felt it was made apparent with your most recent assignment, a simple task not even you could carry out. So what? It's not like you're paying for any of this. It's my life on the line now. What do you have to lose anyways? Maybe you should just get over yourself and move on! Hush, hush. You may alert the guard outside. Now then, just uh, do me a favor and die quickly. I have important business to attend to.